It's cute. It really is because we really want that, but that's not all we're after. That's one of the hurdles that we're jumping over, that we're going over. That's a tremendous hurdle that we're happy, we're excited, but that's not the end goal for us. That's the beginning. That's the beginning. But we are thankful and appreciative that uh, the hard work is going noticed. Tyler, go ahead. Hey, Coach Tyler King with the Denver doing, Gazette. I'm doing well, thank you. Uh, just wanted to get your take on the end of the first half, how important that was. You guys get the stop, and then right. you get the touchdown with 31 seconds left to take that 10-point uh, lead going halftime. How nice was that to see your guys execute in that well, moment? Well, it was, and you're thinking about those type of things. You're thinking about the usage of your timeouts. You're thinking about scoring and knowing we're getting the ball back in the second half, and, you know, you – Double down on it, you know. You you get a, you, you get points, and you come back, and you come out the first half, and you score at second half, and you score too. That's that's tremendous. Um, we're excited with some of the things that we're doing. We really are. But some of the things uh, we're still working, and we're still a work in progress. And uh, we're happy about some things. We're happy about some of the players and what they're doing. I got to see the film to see what everyone truly did and clean up some of the mistakes we made. Uh, tremendous mistakes we made because we shouldn't have let that game get that close, but we, we got the dub. That's what counts. Hey, Coach. Brian Howell with the Bullet Daily yes, Camera. Sir. I have two questions for you. First off, uh, how good was it to see Travis be Travis again after a couple off weeks? Well, well injured weeks. No, we never doubt Travis whatsoever. So him being himself is, is just what we expect. That's the only thing we expect. We don't expect to see anything else. And the second question is just – him, but also the entire secondary. The way uh, you guys shut down their passing game and their their receiver Xavier Henderson is really good. But I think he yeah. had one catch and I yeah talk we, about the secondary yeah but we got some good DBs too. I mean that's not taking nothing away from them, but I think we have three to four corners that can start anywhere. So I'm I'm really satisfied with that, and we're improving each week. But the front end compliments the back end and vice versa. I think we're striving. We're making strides to be where we want to be and to do some of the things that we want to do. Hey, Coach. I'm Jack Harlow with Buffalo's Wire. Um, your thoughts on Shador? Had a more Shador-like night, I think 25 for 30, 300 yeah. plus yards. What was he last week? That yeah, was pretty good, huh? A couple of picks. That's not who he is. So, But tonight was uh, one of those nights. And I mean, Shoot, that's what we expect. He's so darn good that we don't give him the credit that he deserves for some of the things that he does. Coach, he started 15 of 15 school record. Wow. See, you don't even know that stuff because you're into the game and you're coaching. You don't even think about that kind of stuff. I remember, I think he did that one time in Jackson, that he was phenomenal like that. But wow. 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 And they don't even mention him for the Heisman? He's not even mentioned? <laughs> Oh, my bad. He's my son. That's why. <laughs> Hi, Coach. Adam Mostert Tiger, 24-7 Sports. Yes, sir. Alejandro uh, tied a career long with a 47-yarder. Yeah. Can you speak a little bit about kind of that, that clutch kick of his? Well, we the whole time we were sitting up there saying we, we, we got it. You know, they put the flags up and they let me know what we got to get to for, for a lot of time. And uh, we had it. You know, we was trying to steal a touchdown at the end because we knew they were going to be in cover one, and they, they end up dropping an outside backer into one of the slant lanes that we wanted to hit a, a quick slant and try to house that thing. But we got what we wanted because we knew we had the three. Because Mod, Mod is clutch, man. Mod is so wonderful, and we don't care about how high it go through the uprights. We do not care, but it goes through the uprights. That's the thing that counts the most. And he's so consistent of a person. He's so consistent as an athlete and consistent as a, 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 a teammate to his, his, his team. Ryland, go ahead. Ryland Skulls from <clears throat> Ralph Report. You mentioned the run game earlier. Yes, Isaiah Gustav had a great night tonight. Yes. 91 rushing yards, 22 attempts, mm -hmm. 4.1 yards per carry. How important is his success to keeping this offense balanced and opening up the run game? Or the I think, game. I, I don't, I'm not just going to say his success. I think the running game success, period. Um, we got three to four capable backs that can do the doggone thing in that manner. So just running the football, period, takes a tremendous amount of pressure off the quarterback, off the line, and now we have a lot more balance, which I'm not going to say that wins games, but it sure does help the situation, it gives Pat more flexibility to call some things that he would normally call if we couldn't run the ball. But the line, they're, they're taking initiative to 
you know, they 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 getting sick of being talked about and saying that we can't run the football in now. They did a phenomenal job tonight from the beginning to the end. Hey, Coach, Scott Proctor at DMVR. How you doing? Excellent, sir. Love to hear that. Congratulations on the win. When I asked you earlier this week about the running back situation, kind of following up on, on the Isaiah part of things, right. um, you said you kind of wanted, you would prefer a guy to kind of take control of this thing. Yeah. What would you make of his performance, and was that a kind of performance that can kind of make yeah. the guy moving forward? Yeah, but, I mean, all those guys um, – Given the opportunity, I think all of them were produced. They're so different. They, they're so versatile. In some situations, you need this type of guy. Some situations, you need that type of guy. And uh, it, was his, it was his turn tonight, and he performed. I mean, all those guys are hungry. All those guys want to contribute. All those guys just want opportunity. And they all have gotten opportunity. And uh, it was just his turn tonight, and he performed um, greatly. Hi, Coach. Clay Janae here. After this great run, how do you feel about possibly being one of the 12 teams in the playoffs this year and contending for a national title? Well, we ain't thinking about the playoffs right now, right? We, we go one game at a time. We don't even want to be ranked. Don't rank us, please. We, 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 we don't like that. We, we, we'd rather be in the back in the dark, you know, just chilling in the cut. We good. We cool. We straight. All right, so don't rank, don't feel pressure to rank. We good. We're good. I promise you, everybody. We, we are straight. We're good. So uh, we're not thinking about that. We're thinking about going into this bye week, healing, you know, some, some injuries, uh, correcting some things that, that we didn't do well, and having a good time and probably giving them a day or two off. They're not getting a whole week off, I promise you that, but it's a, a day or two off, they deserve that tremendously. Coach Leo Vera with Scope of Sports. The offensive line saw four different gentlemen rotating at guard. What can yeah. you say about that rotation and the impact it has to keep guys fresh? Tremendous. It, it keeps guys fresh. It throws the uh, opposing team off when you they're rotating as well. And I think people should do that more in college football because the defensive line is rotating. So having a fresh lineman to rotate, they're getting playing time now. They may not dip and jump in the portal at the conclusion of the season. And uh, – it's tremendous that we have that type of depth that we can do that. Does Coach Bill take charge of those rotations? Right yes, now? yes. That's, that's his line. That's his thing. And uh, I love everything he, he stands for. I love the way he challenges those guys, uh, the way he supports them, the way he shows them love. But he, he gets on them pretty, pretty tough. But I love everything about him. Coach, uh, I got to give it up for the defense. You know, uh, Coach Livingston, these mm -hmm. guys. Uh, constant pressure, constant harassment of the quarterback. Mm -hmm. Big difference from last year. I think I think last <laughs> year a couple of these games could have gone to use way with the defense like that. Uh, could you talk a little bit about the defense? Well, I let's flush. Can we flush last ways. year? Let's flush that down the toilet. And let's not even look down there. Yeah. Okay? Let's just flush it and walk away. Okay? Um, I'm happy with who we have, what we have, the, the staff, the players that uh, we brought in. I'm, I'm truly happy with all of above, and you guys are starting to see, and your ladies are starting to see everything come together. Um, but we're not nearly where we desire to be. Not nearly. A couple more, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Bill and Weiss, um, you finished with 180 yards after the catch tonight, which I think separates the offense. So how much mm -hmm. do you stress that when you're coaching about making a play after the catch? Um, it's not that we stress that. We have those type of athletes that are capable of that, and those are the type of young men that we go and seek out and we want to sign them here because we know what they could do with the ball when it gets in their hands. Anybody can make the catch. Well, do you go to work with it after you make the catch? And those are the type of, I think, commitments that we've garnished from, uh, I think, a couple guys up here to this weekend. So we just want to keep that going and, and keep attracting those type of young men. How old are you, my man? 19. How old are you? 14. How old are you? 21. Hey, Amen. 14. What you doing, just chilling? <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Just gonna say, it. Hey, come on now. Start letting fourteen-year-olds in here. Awesome. Coach, I wanted to follow up by yes, sir. on something that you said about the Heisman race. Yes, sir. You look around all these lists, and Shador's name isn't on them. I, why I, is let, that let the me, case? Let me. You know darn well why is that? Okay. Let me. Y'all know why is that? Stop. Y'all stop. Um, I don't care. I really don't. It's just strange. It's just funny to me. I just think. It's just ignorant, but it's funny. It's, it's funny to us because Shador could care less. He, he, Shador wants to be drafted in a wonderful city. He wants to win out, and uh, that's what he thinks about. He ain't thinking about no darn Heisman, man. So I'm happy now. 
Travis is the best college football player in the country. We all know that. Why are we even deliberating over that? So why are we even – Why? Wh what are we doing? Like, when does that change? So what's the criteria? Somebody need to say what's the criteria of that prestigious award because uh, – we're looking at the best high school football player that hadn't it hadn't been a Travis Hunter ever, ever. And I'm sitting up here saying that. My other question is, we've been talking about the running game, but this is mm -hmm. the second consecutive game, and I know the game dictates it, where you've rushed more than you've thrown the ball. What does it say about the development of your program that you've come that far? Well, our program, uh, we've 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 come. We're on a wonderful journey. We know what direction we're going. We've done this before at several different locations, all the way from youth all the way up. And this ain't nothing new to us, truly. And uh, we're just happy that we've gotten the opportunity to show you what we're capable of doing. And uh, these young men are excited as well. They love it here. They love to play football for us. And they're attracting like-minded men that <sighs> they're going to love it as well. I met with several of them today, and I can't wait to see them in uh, the buff uniform, and I can't wait to see what uh, they bring to the table. Are we going to do that that we said we're going to do, or that we ain't doing that tonight? What do you say? Are you coming? Okay. Two more. Go ahead, Brian. Mm -hmm. Hey, Coach. Uh, I have two quick ones for you. Yeah. First off, uh, with the play with Jimmy early in the game, mm -hmm. have you ever seen that before where a touchdown gets taken off for – uh, thing like that. And how bad did you feel for? Jim? Well, it's a lot of things that you see here that you never seen before that we can't understand. <laughs> like that pass interference in the corner that nobody saw, right? You right? You remember that one? But uh, we're not upset. We don't get upset with that. We just we just have the expectation that things are going to be different. We're not crying by any means because that's just a part of the game. That's just life. But uh, Jimmy is the best young man that you could ever fathom. I mean, when you're building a young man for your program, uh, receiver, you, you want all the attributes that uh, Jimmy Horn has. So just getting the call back, I didn't like that because I wanted him to, to get the six, you know. But he was so broken about what transpired. But we, you know, we got him together and let him know we, we, we love him, we appreciate him. Just don't do that no more. But I'm, I'm proud of him. Proud the way he played. We got to get him the ball more. We we got to get him the ball more. He he's just he's so darn good. A second question for me. Yes, sir. I, I know you guys have bigger goals, but you yeah. stated since last really December that bowl game. You know, this right. bowl game. Now that you guys have got it, and there's still a month to play. Mm -hmm. How big of a deal is that for this team that they can? Maybe there's some pressure off that. That one's out of the way. You can. That go that ahead. ain't the goal. I mean, that I wanted to do that for Peggy. So that was kind of me. That, that wasn't about us. That was kind of what I wanted for, for Peggy because she deserves it. I think, you know, we had to have a rally and cry for some rhyme or reason, but we want so much more. We're, we want so much more. That's the way we – that's why we practice the way we practice. That's why we go at it the way we go about it. So we want so much more. That was just uh, – that's just the beginning of what we desire around here. Last one. Go ahead, Michael. Hey, Coach, how you doing? How you doing, sir? Good, good. Uh, on the Heisman conversation – uh, do you feel like if the past winners and, and past guys who were nominated for, for the Heisman made the vote, it would make the impact on the best, absolute best player winning the, the trophy? That's, that's, that's pretty creative. We, we think that same way about Hall of Fame. We wish Hall of Famers would make the vote for the Hall of Famers instead of committees that kind of don't know what the heck they talk about or what they're doing or who's who. But – I mean, it is what it is. You got it's, it's some voters out there that really are, are good at, at what they do. So you can't discredit them as well because they're they're really good at what they they do. Um, <laughs> you can never go right with that kind of stuff. Somebody's always going to have opposition, you know. But I just I just get a kick out of it sometimes. Past winners do get a vote. Past winners get a vote. Yeah. Who else get a vote? Media. Media. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not taking that bait. Oh, that's too easy. That was like, that was just a layup. Who won, matter of fact, who won tonight? Did they play baseball tonight? Dodgers. So what is it? Oh, my God. It's 2 0 LA? I don't care who wins. I just, I just, I just like good baseball. Was it a good game? Yeah. Not as good as last night. Yeah? I didn't even see it. Oh, God. I was worried about this thing that we got going on. Anybody else we good? We got the last one? Before I get out? Yes, sir. My brother. Um, what was your mindset today um, going against Cincinnati? Also, um, can you talk about um, 
Take your time, my brother. You good. Let me answer one at a time. My mindset, my mindset, uh, we wanted to win. We wanted to play good, solid football, fundamentally strong. We didn't want to go in there and, and, and come out of there with a multitude of, of penalties because that just that just ruined it for you. We wanted to be balanced on on every phase of our game, you know, running the football, throwing the ball, stopping the run, defending the pass, um, special teams. We wanted to punt well. We, we knew Model was going to do his thing as well as mate. But one thing that we're really trying to get is that ball in the end zone on kickoffs. We, we were really trying to get that ball in the end zone. I think we had a couple touchbacks today. And that's that's tremendous for us, but we got to we, we we got to get that ball in the end zone so we don't even give them the opportunity. So that was the mindset. We we really wanted to go out there, um, home game. We, we the best fan base ever. Matter of fact, let me say this: um, to whom am they concerned? Please don't throw bottles and and things on the field. Um, we're better than that. We're so much better than that. And. Uh, the people that are doing that, you're better than that. You, and, and nobody deserves that. Somebody's going to get hit, somebody's going to get hurt, and then you're going to jail and you're going to second guess that. Then they're going to throw you out of school and it's going to be all of that. And you don't want that. We're better than that. So let's not do that by any means. We're so much better than that as a university, as young men and women in the crowd. We are so better than that. So thank you for, for not doing that anymore if you hearing this message. It's, it's critical because we are so much better than that. Yes, sir. Uh, Lincoln Road just you in the penalty. So you just brought up, you know, having to speak to the fans directly to ask them to stop yeah. in the trash. Are you at all worried about the precedent that might have been set last week with Texas fans going to I don't give a damn about no Texas fans. They ain't got nothing to do with us. But are you worried about college football, the effects that that might have had on no. you? No. No. No, no. What's good for them ain't good for us. We don't, we don't. Some things you just don't tolerate. We don't tolerate certain things here. We got one of the most beautiful campuses, the beautiful city. Um, you barely ever see trash around here. You, you. I walk campus every day. Uh, I walk this morning. So this is so beautiful, and we just can't stoop to those type of lows because it may be the popular thing at the time. We're better than that. So that's why I'm trying to stabilize that we are so much better than that. I think we got the best fan base in the country. Um, you guys are doing a wonderful and phenomenal job. And here's my son. I'm out.